Today we'll make simple Simon socks together. I designed these especially for hobby machines. I'll be using my KX350. This is the simplest style in my Happy Hobby Socks book. I own all the rights, so it's okay for me to share this with you. As you can see, we start with Simple Simon and then many more styles are included, all of them fancier than these basics. This is the sock that we'll be making, only this is a child sock. And we'll be making a lady sock. The book includes sizes from infant to extra large men. Today I'm going to make myself the simplest possible socks, but they're going to be in an odds and end of very luxurious yarn. So these are socks that I will use for sleeping. They have no shaping, and I prefer for wearing in my shoes and boots better fitting socks. But this is the simplest possible tube sock design. They're called Simple Simon Socks. And what I'm showing you is from my book, Happy Hobby Socks. What we're doing today will fit ladies sizes 6 to 8, and I'm going to make the 6. The only difference in this size is that for 7 and 8, you knit a few more rows. But because they have no heel shaping, it's forgiving. If you want to make some for your cousin, and you know she's pretty medium-sized, you don't have to stretch over row perfection because the heel will just fall where it happens to fall. It also will not be a neatly shaped and fitted premium sock, but they can be very comfortable nevertheless. Well, the book includes two gauges and sizes from baby size 1 to men's size 16. We're only going to work with one of those gauges, the mid-gauge version, which is an expected stitch count of six per inch. And here's an overview of what we'll do. So easy. Cast on 48 stitches, knit 140 rows. There are some small refinements and I will be showing you those as we go, but let's just get started and knit. I've got my 48 needles pulled into forward position or hold position because I think it's easier to e-wrap like that. And I have placed my initial yarn loop on the first one, and I'm e-wrapping across. E-wrapping is the preferred cast-on for this project. Normally, I put my finger above to control the um, loops when I e-wrap like this, but I'm afraid it's getting in the way of your viewpoint. So I'm doing it what I consider the harder way, but still it's functional so that you can see me e-wrapping. All the way across we go. The e-wrapping is complete, and although it's out of your viewpoint, you can hear me clicking my side levers into end position so that I can knit back from home. There we go. Now, at this point, I would love to hang my comb, but it's a little bit too thick, and I would fear jamming or messing up stitches if I didn't knit back from hold one or two more rows, so I will. And that's row two. Let's just be careful. Why well, make a fool of myself on camera? Let's do a third one and then hang the comb. Row three. By the way, for my particular yarn, I'm on stitch size four. I don't know if you can quite see it. But, of course, you really need to know how your yarn performs. This one will not produce six stitches per inch right off of the machine. Because my yarn is largely wool, it's going to shrink considerably when I wash it. And, of course, socks are to be washed. Even though I will wash by hand, that's still true. So that's row three, and I believe we're ready to just knit to the required row count. However, my required row count is 140, and I'm actually going to only knit to 136, four rows before the completed amount. The reason for this is that we are going to do one tiny refinement over the very most basic sock. 
to lift me up. Well, I keep knitting, I want to talk to you a little bit about sock fabrics. If I were going to make a sweater out of this, I would be knitting on a considerably looser, larger stitch size. But I like my sweater fabrics to drape. I don't want my sock fabric to drape. And I don't want to feel the stitches under my feet when I walk. Therefore, I like my sock fabric tighter and denser. And that takes a smaller stitch size. 136 rows knitted. Now I'm going to take every fourth stitch, move it to the next needle over, and then we'll knit one row. For the next row, if I'm pretty sure that the machine will knit it at a tighter stitch size, I will reduce the stitch size. If I'm pretty sure it won't, I will have to skip that. I think it will, so I'm going to give it a try. Making a complete fool of myself if I have guessed wrong. It's not entirely a guess. I have done it with this yarn before. And speaking of this yarn, you may notice that it looked blue before and now it looks gray. That is because I'm using up odds and ends and I changed colors. My pair of socks won't be a true pair, but I will live. They are for sleeping making sure that all of the empty needles are now out of work. And when I write a pattern, I often abbreviate that empties out of work. Now to make life easier on the machine, I'm going to do half the work for it. This should make it easier to pull back the needles through those doubled stitches at the tight stitch size because half of the work is pushing them forward, and I just did that. So I'm set on in. It should knit them back from home. Okie dokie, and it did. Making sure you can still see, yes. Now I'm going to take each center stitch from each group of three, that one doesn't want to come up, and transfer it. There we go. Again, empties out of work. So I work all across. And I'll be back when these are all transferred. All my transfers are complete. All my empties are out of work. I'm going to reduce the stitch size on the carriage one more time. I've moved my needles forward to make it easier on the carriage to knit this tighter row. One. And it made it. Two. Now the sock is essentially done, and at this point I'm going to pull down enough yarn to seam it with and to use as a drawstring for this simply shaped toe and drop that out of the carriage. You could simply thread that yarn tail onto a yarn needle at this point and gather the toe off. I don't like to do it hunched over the machine. It's easier to me to do it on waste yarn. So I've threaded some waste yarn in the carriage. And I'll just knit a few rows so that the rest of it could be worked in a more comfortable position. I'm unraveling from a previous swatch as I go. That's what you're seeing me do when it pops, yarn pops into the picture. That should be enough yarn. I mean, enough waste yarn to make life easy. I'm going to give it a lengthwise tug because it's on every other needle. Now you can see how my toe has pulled in a little bit, even though there's no true shaping involved. So it won't be as bunchy as a gathered toe on all of the stitches. Half of the original number are in work here. I have put my yarn tail into a needle, and now we just need to go across the work 
running this yarn tail on its needle through every single one of the last row of main yarn stitches. It's really very easy. It would be easier still than what I'm doing right now had I um, changed colors more dramatically, say bright yellow. I believe that they are all through, but it pays before you gather to go back and take a good look. And I still believe they're all picked up. That is, all the stitches are on the new strand of yarn, which is really the yarn tail from the main knitting. And I've already freed the end on the other side. But here I'm trying to make sure that when I try to pull out my waist yarn, it'll pull. And if you don't mind wasting a little waste, then I don't because this was already a reused swatch. Uh -huh. There was a spare piece of yarn in there. It's fine to clip it as I'm doing now. That should mean that when I tug gently and firmly, it'll pull straight out. And it did. So now we only need to gather this up. And because it's all that's keeping my toe together, when I gather, I tend to be very firm about it. Here it is, worked through the same stitches, and now I'm pulling it tight. You will notice I've left a rather long yarn tail, and that creates a management issue. But it is necessary if you want to use your continuous yarn tail to also seam the sock, and I do. So let me get this secured, and we'll start seaming. I am working something called the Bee's Knees Seam. may have other names other places in the world. Here is how it looks from the outside. It's not completely invisible, but it's pretty neat and tidy and flat, which is kind of important for socks. Not as important for these socks to be only worn for lounging as ones that you'll wear on your feet, standing on your feet all day, but still, we care a little bit. Here's how it looks from the inside. Not as invisible, but still pretty flat. Now, this seam is based on the concept of knots and bars, which, because of the way the tension mast works on machine knitting, occur along the edges of the fabric. And I'm going to show you what I mean. That's a bar. It's relatively loose and easy to get your tool under. That is a knot, alternate row much snugger. Also, I'm trying to unroll it so you can see, the knots sort of make bumps at the edge of the fabric. Each of my thumbs is just outside one of them. And the bumps resemble knees, which is my theory about where this seam got its name. Knee or knot. And next up, a bar much looser. You can see that if you pulled the bars together, you'd have a different character of seam than if you pull those snugger knots together. This may be worked from either side of the fabric, but today I'm working from the inside. And here's how I do it. First locate the last knot I worked into. Skip the next bar and pushing in from the fabric side towards the fabric edge, I go through the next available knot. Same thing from the other side. Let me set up so you can see. Bar, knot. We'll go in. And now that there's one on each side, we'll make sure to pull snug, but not too snug. Remember, knitted fabric stretches lengthwise as well as widthwise, though not as much. So if your seam is more tight than the fabric, you'll eventually break the seam. Through a bar, and I'm going very slowly, but you won't eventually. You'll spot things and get a good clip going. It's never speedy to seam socks. But this is one of the faster seams. 
Now, I'm going to do one more with you, and then I'm going to finish off camera. There's the next bar, so we skip it. There's the next knot. Next bar. Next knot. Now, I would not, on your first pair, stress out overly. If you're going to wear these as bed socks, you can enjoy them without a perfect seam. And it's more important to get some practice in and succeed pretty well than that your first pair be perfect. All right, I'm off to finish it up, and then I'll show it to you. Here's the finished sock. I've got it folded so that it all fits more or less in the frame. The top rolls, because we didn't do anything about hemming, which is actually pretty warm and cute for a casual sock. There's our seam. It has not yet been washed, so it will be less visible still once washed. And I want to draw your attention to the toe. In my opinion, while it is nowhere near as nice and smooth as a properly shaped and kitchener toe, it's still not bad. It's not puckering. So for a lounging sock, pretty comfy. And here it is on my foot. It's still not washed, so the fabric will become denser and you'll see less stitch definition because this is a fuzzy yarn. But that's basically it.